considering this is a 44 Magnum and could blow your head clean off, you gotta be asking yourself, do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? Hamlet was a tragic character, true or false? Are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? No, really, I, di I didn't hear your answer. Was that, were you answering the, the question? Was that you? <laughs> say hello to my little friend. And say goodbye to your fucking cell phone. Mr. Leventhal, it is inappropriate to use foul language in front of children. You do not want me to take out Bessie. You do not want to meet Bessie. Mr. Leventhal, is that a water gun? You cannot have water guns in the classroom. It's a student safety issue. It's time for Forward Nation Radio. Now here he is, the host of Bowie Nation Radio, David Leventhal. Welcome to Forward Nation Radio with me, David Leventhal. Thank you as always for joining us. On today's show, Guns, Traitors, Russia Edition, Profiles in Courage, another installment of Profiles in Courage, <laughs> Republican Edition, and the tax bill. But first, we're going to start with immigration. Before we forget, the United States Supreme Court just yesterday refused to hear the Trump appeal on the lower court's ruling on DACA. Basically, that Trump could not willy-nilly, with no forethought, no planning, just stop the uh, DACA the, uh, agreement. So the Republicans had appealed it to the United States Supreme Court directly before the appellate court, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, heard it. This is an extremely unusual move, available only for the direst of emergencies, which the Republicans argued this was. After all, we are talking brown people. But somehow the Supreme Court, even with a conservative majority, was not convinced that there was any emergency in throwing out people who've been living in the country for two decades. So the Supreme Court refusing to hear this means that the Ninth Circuit will get to look at the lower court's ruling. The Ninth Circuit is a famously liberal court. The Trump administration is expecting they're not going to get a very favorable ruling from them. They feel much more comfortable in the United States Supreme Court, which of course is why they stole the Supreme Court in the first place. Hopefully, the Ninth Circuit, first of all, will drag its heels for several years. Because this is the good news we have to start the show. Nothing happened. And right now in the Trump administration, nothing happening is the best we can ever hope for. <laughs> this is why Democrats are just fighting for a vote on DACA to move forward. Actually, why they're doing that is because DACA apparently polls tremendously well. A vast majority of Americans want the dreamers to be able to stay in this country. The problem is, that brings us back full circle to what we've been talking about for weeks, gerrymandering. Real people don't really matter. The only thing that matters, because Congress is so gerrymandered, is what the kind of jackass who votes in a Republican primary wants to see. And that person wants to see white people. Okay, guns. Maybe the news is somewhat good on this one, although it's not happy to report on the aftermath of our shootings, but Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School reopened for business today. So as the students go back to relive their trauma, we could talk about the state of gun control in America. And we can ask the question of whether Generation Z can keep fighting for long enough to promote change. 
In other words, do people who were brought up on iPhones have the attention span to keep fighting for several months? And will they be able to bring a lot of the rest of us on board? Well, a lot has happened this week on guns, and to, for that we have to thank the survivors, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. Let's start at the beginning. It seems like so long ago that we were talking about Marco Rubio and his town hall meeting, where he was hailed by right and left for his bravery in being willing to talk to his constituents, and not just the ones who were putting money in his pocket. Well, one of the funniest things I've seen in a long time on TV that didn't involve Stephen Colbert was when Marco Rubio said, asked if he would refuse to take NRA money, and Marco Rubio said, I don't take orders from the NRA. They support my agenda, not the other way around. Which would be inspiring words if they were uttered by someone with a backbone, by someone who wasn't a national laughingstock for having no views or positions of his own other than whatever he is told to believe in this particular moment and whatever the polls indicate. So, a little bit of levity in the midst of a huge tragedy. Well, Marco Rubio, that man of thoughtful consideration. Can we get a picture of the thinker up there? Because I, I hadn't thought of this before, but, but this would work here. He is reconsidering his position on high-capacity magazines. Reconsidering? Are you now under the sway of the deer and rabbit lobby? High-capacity magazines? How are we still talking about this? How is this a thing in America that someone could buy a magazine where he could do an incredible, and he, yes, could do an incredible amount of damage in a short period of time without even having to reload? What are they afraid of? Packs of polar bears? <laughs> <coughs> Polar bears don't even travel in packs. They're solitary animals. <laughs> there's, there's no polar bear MS-13. Sorry, maybe there will be in another couple of weeks. <laughs> Try as you might. You don't need a high-capacity magazine to shoot deer. How are we still having this conversation? Marco Rubio was, however, able to take a strong stand against the dangerously deranged getting guns. No, seriously, seriously. He took a strong stand against the dangerously deranged getting guns. Bravely taking on the armed dangerously deranged lobby. We're, we're talking about raising the age of assault to buy an assault rifle from 18 to 21, and we can't even get that done, apparently. Donald Trump, talking to students, said, I like the idea of raising the age to buy an assault rifle from 18 to 21. But then the NRA whispered in his ear. And as we know, the last person to whisper in Trump's ear wins. So now we're not talking about that anymore. I didn't even think that was a joke. I never know what's going to work. Anyway, we've made strides. A, a 2016, it was recently reported, Harvard Business School study found that states with overwhelmingly Republican legislative bodies, in the aftermath of a mass shooting like this, those states saw a 75% increase in the number of laws passed to loosen gun restrictions. Not to tighten gun restrictions, to loosen gun restrictions. Except, of course, where Republicans might be found. So, you can't have guns at the Republican National Convention, for instance. That would be bad. I recently had a conversation with my nephew who pointed out that at his school, 
One of his senators, he's in Virginia, one of his senators was coming to do a walkthrough at his school. Unfortunately, the senator was a Democrat. So I couldn't tell my nephew that he and his, all of his fellow teachers and students should pack heat to show that senator how safe he is walking through the corridors of schools with everybody around carrying guns. Then the week progressed and we learned about President Trump holding notes, telling him how to act like a human when he spoke to the survivors of a school massacre. The President of the United States needed to be reminded of things like, make believe you give a shit. <laughs> it's, it's insane. Well, that was still early in the week. Since then, we've seen the NRA solution to school shootings. And this is, I hope everybody's seated because this is gonna blow your mind. More guns! Who could have seen that one coming? More guns is the solution. You only could have seen that one coming if, I don't know, you've been alive for like the last 30 years in America and have noticed that this is the NRA solution every time there is a mass shooting. Because, as we pointed out in this show, made perfectly clear, the NRA is about selling guns. They are gun manufacturers. Anyway, I was asked in class the other day by a student, seriously, who said, I read in the paper that Donald Trump has proposed arming teachers and custodians. That's a joke, right? That's what the student asked me. I said, we'd like to believe it was a joke, but it's really not a joke. He said, how could this be? How could this make sense? And of course the answer is, you're confusing what the goal is. If you think the goal is to make people safer and reduce gun deaths, then it's stupid. And you have to respond like we've said, you should respond to a boggart. Ridiculous. But if the goal is to sell more guns, it's not that ridiculous. Arm several hundred thousand teachers, many of whom are going to have to buy guns. Now, when it was mentioned, I thought, this is a really stupid idea. But then I thought about it, and I said, well, I'm a teacher. And I thought, <laughs> this could do a lot to promote discipline in the classrooms. <laughs> do your fucking homework. <laughs> okay? Besides, I've always wanted to be able to say, Yippee-ki-yay, motherfucker. <laughs> really? Some of you haven't seen Die Hard? <laughs> anyway, some people say, I'll leave this on while I finish this, because it doesn't fit. <laughs> <laughs> How small a head do you have? I don't have a big brain. Um, <laughs> the brain is big. There's not a lot of space between it and the skull, apparently. <laughs> what the hell was I talking about now? Um, yeah, I know. People point out, naysayers, the skeptics, point out that, well, armed and trained sheriff's deputies didn't go in and solve the problem. In the last several shootings, there have been armed security or armed police nearby that haven't done anything or haven't been able to stop it. Why would teachers make a difference? And the answer, of course, is, You've never fucked with a teacher. <laughs> you don't fuck with teachers, okay? You think, you think Donald Trump is brave? You should try teachers. Okay, you think Don, no, still in the picture? Okay, there you go. I'll throw that to the person waiting <laughs> off stage. I, I'll throw the gun too. Can we get a gunshot sound? 
because that would be that would be cute, right? Oops, I hope nobody was hurt. I just I totally blew that joke. You're going to have to edit that. Anyway, um, teachers and custodians with a few hours of trading training, you're going to yeah, that's going to work. Um, earlier in the week, of course, we were ready to talk about John Kelly, superstar. Because John Kelly was going to go in and save the day. Donald Trump pointed out how people like John Kelly, military veterans, were going to come in and save the day. And that's an important part of the Trump proposal that we shouldn't forget. He's talking primarily people from the military with some background who could get trained to teach and be in our schools. Okay, only a skeptic would point out that giving guns to people with a high likelihood of be, to be suffering from PTSD might not be a good idea. Some of you have seen this clip. Let's see if I can find this. Maybe I can't. I know that's the popular version of what went on there. I know a lot of people like to believe that. I wish I could, but I was there. I wasn't here in a classroom hoping I was right, thinking about it. I was up to my knees in rice paddies with guns and Edward going up against Charlie, slugging it out with him while pussies like you were back there partying, putting headbands on, doing drugs, listen to the goddamn Beatle albums. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> yes, the one thing that the Sam Kinison character in Back to School, it's a funny movie, you should watch it if you haven't seen it, was missing was a gun to be terrorizing his students. We need more OK Corral. We're being governed by people who actually look at the OK Corral and say, that was when things were wonderful in America. That was when times were good. Anyway, John Kelly was the superhero earlier in the, in the week because he was going to go in and save the day as an ex-military guy. But that was earlier in the week. And now we know who's going to save the day. Well, the one thing that we were missing in our president was him starring in his own comic book. Donald Trump is going to go in and save the day. You, you really can't make this stuff up. It's not even, I'm so sick of this. Seriously, I'm so tired of having to do this shit. Can somebody declare a blackout in Washington? Well, Mar-a-Lago. Just send him to frickin' Mar-a-Lago. Make there a blackout. Leave him there. And let's not have to think about him for the next couple of years. Donald Trump actually said the guy would go in and stop this, would confront the shooter, even if he didn't have a gun. The man is going to run into a fire barefoot. Bone spurs and all to go save America. The NRA's other solution, and I'm not making this up, put in God we trust on every school. That's the answer. Remember a few years ago when Barack Obama pointed out that when people in America get afraid, worry about their economic future, they tend to turn to God and guns. I don't remember if he included gays. The Republicans have been about God, gays, and guns for a long time. Obama was criticized right and left. How dare you have such a low opinion of conservative voters? Or more likely, how dare you tell the world the truth, the obvious truth about conservative voters? So here we have guns and God. I'm assuming that next week the NRA will come out and say, the problem with school shootings is gay people gay students. If you can just get gays out of school, everybody, it will be okay. You're laughing, but wait. Just wait. Anyway, that's the NRA solution. What's the Republican solution? Whatever he says. Pointing at the NRA. Whatever the guy stuffing money in our pockets and getting voters to the polls says. Did you notice, by the way, when Trump came out with his budget proposal a couple of weeks ago, that it was going to cut millions of dollars from school safety? Not a lot of focus on school safety there. He and his education secretary, the one without the education, 
Betsy DeVos, proposed a $7.1 billion, 10.5% decrease in public education funding for 2019, which I'm sure wouldn't affect security at all. So what is the Republican solution? What it always is. Stall, stall, stall. Wait until people stop paying attention and then do nothing except maybe get more guns. Well, so far, people are still paying attention. And let's join the fight with those brave high schoolers and do something about this and keep the pressure on to do something about this. This is also a good time to remember again, as I keep doing, that until this all started, the recent spate of mass shootings, the Republican plan in Congress was to, in effect, eliminate state and local gun laws. Just wait. If they can divert attention for long enough, and let's hope the moron doesn't go drop a nuclear bomb somewhere. We'll have that one back on the table again because the NRA wants it. Anyway, other squaring the circle with other things we've discussed. The number one trending video on YouTube a few days ago was that one of the victims of the high school shooting, one of the students who've spoken out bravely against gun violence, is really an actor put up to it. And I'm not making it up. In some circles, they're actually blaming it on George Soros, the typical Republican boogeyman who also happens to be a Jew. It's the Jews again. The reason the NRA is so powerful, even though what they are fighting for is extremely unpopular in America, even among gun owners, even among members of the NRA is intensity. The people who are lunatics are the most active, the most willing to vote and scream and whatnot. And we on the side of decency need to start matching that intensity. And we have people showing us the way. There have been some improvements. We are seeing a nationwide, nationwide boycott that is spurring businesses to take the lead in disassociating themselves from the NRA. Not because they have ethics, by the way, but because this issue right now makes it in their financial interests to do this, because we're paying attention. As Soon as we stop paying attention, by the way, they're going right back to what they were doing, because they're hearing it from the NRA. In the meantime, First National Bank of Omaha, Enterprise Rental Car, it's spread from there. It's not the usual script, because businesses are scared, and businesses are scared because we are activated. Get your friends activated, get people involved. Most importantly, register your friends to vote and get them out to vote. Republicans running this country right now are busy fighting back against those businesses that are trying to divest themselves from the NRA. Republicans are fighting back by, tell, by punishing these businesses for how they've chosen to do business. Does anyone out there understand the irony of the political party that says government should stay out of business and never tell businesses what to do? We shouldn't, for instance, tell them environmentally safe or treat their workers well but when it comes to guns the Republican Party has no problem telling businesses what they should be doing we should be putting pressure on our entities to divest this is why government matters the New York City public employee pension fund recently divested itself from its investments in guns, as have California. Go to goodbygunstocks.com to learn how you can get your stocks out of guns. And vote, because voting makes a difference. Okay, I'm sure we'll have more to talk about on guns next week, but in the meantime, we don't want to shortchange Russia. 
because it's been a busy week for Jared. <laughs> yes, that's right, Jared, our own resident Russian spy in the White House. That guy who has been acting, who has been exposed to the deepest, darkest U.S. government secrets for over a year without a security clearance because he couldn't get a security clearance. Actually was just denied a security clearance. Incredibly. This is a guy described as a senior advisor to President Trump who cannot get a security clearance. Boy, I hope he's not using a private email server. That would be bad. <laughs> By the way, when we say senior advisor, we're not talking experience. <laughs> we're talking about your, your responsibilities. If we were talking experience, he would be a null set advisor of the president. And he'd just be one of many null set advisors who have no experience, they have no idea what the hell they're doing that are working in this White House. But he is exposed to the deepest secrets. And he can't get a security clearance. Not just because his finances are a swamp and he's been lying repeatedly about his contacts with hostile foreign governments. That we could have dealt with, I guess. But it turns out, and Robert Mueller may soon have something to say about this, it turns out this guy could be so compromised by all kinds of foreign agents. He is so in hoc to so many unsavory characters. It's hard to believe someone like that could get anywhere near the Trump campaign if he weren't his son-in-law. And if, if he wasn't a Paul Manafort, um, that too, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Paul Manafort as well, it turns out, apparently is in hock to Russian mobsters who probably have a relationship with Vladimir Putin. Whether or not Trump knew about this, they hired him. They hired these people. The same people who wanted to hang Hillary Clinton from the nearest branch because she used a private email server. And could you imagine if either Hillary Clinton or Obama just went ahead and put their family members in all these posts? In the whole thing, you, yeah. you look, when I say I'm sick of this, this, this whole thing, not only the Russia thing, every day there's another scandal that any other presidency would have brought down the presidency, would have been investigated in Congress, would have pushed impeachment. With this president, it's just, there are no boundaries. Because I know I'm not allowed to say fucking morons, so I'm not saying fucking morons. Okay, Trump supporters, Republicans. See, I didn't say fucking morons. I'm getting better. We're very proud. Okay, I'm, I'm, doing, I'm really doing better. I can learn, okay? Anyway, we mentioned last week that Rick Gates was about to turn state's evidence because it was obvious he was. It's now official. Rick Gates is turning on his former boss, leading Paul Manafort to say, I am completely innocent. This is completely a witch hunt. And I really don't understand why everybody who's ever been associated with me has now pled guilty to a federal crime, like the ones I'm being charged with. <laughs> it's all bullshit. <laughs> it's all made up. And the Trump supporters are going, yeah, it's all made up. It's all made up. Um, Democrats came out this week and released their rebuttal memo to the Nunes memo. The memo that was so ridiculous on its face that it didn't even need to be rebutted, but it's rebutted all the same. It doesn't matter. We're talking to ourselves. Republican voters, Trump supporters at this point are incapable of seeing facts and learning. They're not gonna learn from this. This is a memo that actually says that what the Republicans said in their memo was a lie. You know, what the FBI said, but you can't trust the FBI, the freaking government. <laughs> it just shows how it was a lie. For instance, they never told the FBI when they sought the, wire, the warrant, the FISA warrant, they, they never told the FISA court that some of the information was provided by some company that got some money from Hillary Clinton. When in fact, 
right in the document it says some of this information came from a company that got money from Hillary Clinton. Will the fact that the Republicans are shown to be lying through their teeth affect any Republican voters? Ask your friends. Ask your relatives. I hope you don't have any friends who are Republicans. I hope you move down past that road. Um, this memo, of course, didn't make the splash of the Republican memo made. But at least when the Republican memo came out, most of the attention was, it doesn't even say what it purports to say. Oh, by the way, one other thing about that ridiculous FISA warrant. People keep pleading guilty based on it. And it kept getting renewed by Republican judges, it turns out. They were lying about that one, too. Everything's bullshit, except that our country is probably being run by traitors. Anyway, Trump was talking about, of course, possibly testifying to the special counsel. Well, the Wall Street Journal, owned by Rupert Murdoch, came out this week with a report that White House aides are saying that they can't let Trump testify to the special counsel, as we reported weeks ago, because they know Trump will perjure himself. That's what the White House aides are saying to the press. We can't let him speak to the special prosecutor because he will lie. He will perjure himself. One, because he has to, and two, because it's what he does. But, but maybe they should send him in with like a list of talking points, you know, like that five or so list. The problem is that doesn't work when someone gets to follow up. It'll make him feel better, though. That, it might, but, but then he has to leave. Because actually, right now, he can get an important phone call, an important tweet or something. Because that's, the, that's the, what they're saying out loud, the White House aides are saying, this is even better than, than the other joke before. Donald Trump can't speak to the special counsel because he's too busy being the president. <laughs> I'm serious. That, and he's got a tea time. I, I mean, he's, he's, he's due to tea off. I'm not even going to build on that. They said the man is too busy to speak to the special counsel. The guy who spends up to eight hours a day watching TV when he's not golfing. <laughs> anyway, before we go, Profiles in Courage, Republican edition. Remember little Bob Corker? Remember how he spoke out against Donald Trump, called him an unruly toddler? The White House was adult daycare. The moron might start World War III. <laughs> Can't you take a joke? That was when Bob Corker wasn't running for re-election. It turns out now Bob Corker wants to run for re-election. So, fences are mended. <laughs> the guy who might start World War III, he's our president and I'm on board with the toddler in the baby seat. Remember choke artist Mitt Romney? He's on board. Remember Ted Cruz? He with the ugly wife and the president murdering father? <laughs> he needs to be on board too. I guess these are all the guys with this kind of courage. They're rushing into the school all together to stop the school shooter. Because these guys are courageous. <laughs> Remember disgraceful Jeff Sessions? Back in the Trump tweet storm today, taking more shit. Because he had the nerve to actually allow an investigation of the FISA court to proceed without making sure the investigation would be compromised by partisan hacks. What kind of bullshit, what kind of a way to run a government is that? Accountability? Give me a break. How does that coincide with Trump administration ethics? You know, the ethics that John Kelly was brought in to really clean up. John Kelly, who may in fact be committing espionage 
with relation to what he has done with Rob Porter and all. More on the Rob Porter story next week. We don't want to leave that out, but there's been all kinds of fun happenings. But let's leave for a moment the unbelievable swamp of going to CPAC, the Conservative Political Action Conference, which has, this week, certifiably gone full Trump insane. Because to be a Republican right now means you go all in on insanity. Anyway, that's it for this week's show. Thank you for joining us. If you like looking forward and enjoy getting your news from Russia, please go on to Facebook and like us on Facebook. Use Twitter to spread the word. Go to forwardnationradio.com. That's more trustworthy. That's forwardnationradio.com. Get the full experience. You'll see the video from this and every episode there, as well as all kinds of other content on our website. Go to our YouTube channel as well. Please don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. Listen to us on Podbean. And we'll see you next week. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye. Listening to Forward Nation Radio with David Leventhal.